are you defining second wave feminism and who would be on the forefront of that quote unquote movement? A second wave feminism? Well, um, obviously Betty Friedan is the one who kicked it into motion with, when she founded uh, the National Organization for Women, co-founded it in 1966. It was the first uh, organization, political organization, devoted to women's rights since in, in America, since uh, women had won the right to vote in 1920. So she has a, had a pivotal role in, in setting it forth. But then she herself, quarreled okay, with other members of, of now, and she was eventually booted out of it, okay? uh, and, and part of it, one, one of her many, her lists of, you know, she's a very abrasive personality, um, forceful personality, I, I admired her, uh, but she, was, she could be unreasonable, um, and, and uh, it was when she called you know, the young lesbians you know, the, the lavender menace, okay? <laughs> <laughs> that there was this big re revolt, you know, against against her, um, and uh, uh, her, you know, her, the, the book. When we look back at at um, you know at the feminine mystique, which was a surprise bestseller in 1963. Okay, uh, when you look back at it, there are a lot of problems with it, such as th there are no sources. Okay, the whole thing is unsourced. Okay, right? and the and and the list, you know, the, the list of grievances and disasters that, that that she says flowed. Okay, from women's you know lack of uh, professional opportunities opportunities in life and so on. I mean, it's, it's everything. She, she, like, she lists cancers, you know, body cankers. I mean, it's like, I mean, like every, every possible human disaster, every plague, okay, like plagues of locusts, okay, you know, came from, okay. and, and you really, and you can, you feel the hysteria in, in the book. Uh, there's also things in it that are, um, that uh, are very surprising, such as she rejects, um, she rejects abstract expressionism. <laughs> I mean, it's like foreign films, I mean, this whole, this whole, I mean it's, a, it's a rather provincial, you know, culturally speaking, but at any rate, other people took over, okay, and by, by the early 1970s, you, ha you, you have Gloria Steinem, okay, emerging as the face of, of feminism, and, and um, Bet Betty Friedan uh, resented it, Be uh, she said, oh, Gloria goes to Kenneth to have her hair streaked, okay, which, which was true, right, and Gloria Steinem was very um, photo telegenic, okay, at a time when television um, it was you know, very important, and I, I admired her. Um, it's it's, it's going to be hard to believe, okay? But Time Magazine, with that yes, I subscribe to, uh, actually asked the question, okay, in the early 70s, uh, who would make a good, you know, first woman president? And I wrote in Gloria Steinem. Do you believe it? Okay, and because I, I, I said, oh, when age has dimmed her beauty and so and so on. All right, now I thought better of it, okay, you know, later on, but she, um, but so Steinem, okay. Steinem has a man problem. Okay, so this 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 this, this anti-male thing got embedded into feminism from a lot of these. There, there's some women who are really borderline crazy women at the very beginning. Okay, some of them are really <laughs> radical ones, right? But Steinem, um, you know, she was she's not an original creator of uh, of ideas. Uh, but, but she was a wonderful presence. I mean, she, she's, she's the one who really established that it was possible to be a reasonable person, okay, and, uh, you know, an attractive woman, okay, and be a feminist. That you didn't, you, 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 you know, people are not always like, Andrew Dworkin, you know, and so on, uh, like that. <laughs> Right. Uh, so, all right, so what happened was, I tried to join, I mean, I, I was, you know, I was, you know, I'm like this completely, um, heterodox personality, okay, uh, you know, aggressive, always in trouble, et cetera, et cetera. I tried to join the women's movement. I got booted out again and again and again, okay. I've, to I've written about it, okay, like, you know, that, like, when, when it was 1970, 71, when I had that, almost that fist fight, okay, with the New Haven Women's Liberation Rock Band, okay, <laughs> all right, because, uh, because I was defending the Rolling Stones, okay, uh, and, 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 and uh, I had this huge screaming argument about the song, Rolling Stones song, Under My Thumb. And I said, look, I said, under my thumb, the lyrics are sexist, yes, okay, all right? But it's a great, this is a great song. And it's, in, fa in fact, it's a work of art, okay? And I still maintain that, that under my thumb is a work of art, okay? You had the, the incredible marimba, okay, of Brian Jones in there. It's, it's fen phenomenal. And also, if you listen to the lyrics in an intelligent manner, you can see that, that, there, that there is a, it's about a power reversal, okay? That's almost like something out of William Blake, where once she had me down, now I've got her down. Well. You know, in William Blake, she'll get him down again in the next, you know, the cycle, et cetera. It's like the whole power dynamic of, of sex. Um, uh, but oh my God, oh, that was like a hard. And they were probably spitting in my face. They, and they, they said, they said, I, I, I said, this is a work of art. Art, art. Nothing that demeans women can be art. Did you hear that? I'm going to repeat it. Okay. All right. 
These feminist rock musicians said, nothing that demeans women can be art. Right there you have it, the Stalinist view of art. Okay? I follow Oscar Wilde, my first influence, okay, it was like a, a book called The Epigrams of Oscar Wilde that I, I stumbled on in a secondhand bookstore in Syracuse when I was 14. Right? And I, there's maxims about art and about the independence of art and, and art's freedom from philanthropy and, and, and humanitarians and all these do-gooders and so on. Right? And I didn't quite understand everything in that book, but now I understand it. Okay? Everyone who wants to clean up art, make art politically correct, okay? Make it manageable, okay? Make it palatable, okay? And so I, I, I complain, I mean, we, we need another Oscar Wilde right now. Um, but wait, wait, not back to your question. Wait, you, <laughs> what, wait what, was, what was your question? It was about, about, so, so, all right. I think it was about the second wave of feminism. Yeah. And who would you call one of the leaders of the second wave of feminism? Yeah, okay, so it's like Gloria Steinem is the face, you know, of feminism, all right? They, Kate Millett was put on the cover of Time magazine for her book, okay, Sexual Politics, all right? and, she didn't, and uh, um, she didn't particularly like the attention or want the attention, um, from it, uh, and, and um, so sexual politics is is the book 1970 that or is it 71 that create that that created the template okay of which is which is this you know taking ideology wading in you know into some you know, famous book by a, a male artist okay and with your rubber stamp going misogyny sexism like that you know, and so on. Kate Millett created that style okay all right and um, and even to this day people go on about about her she was this she was that well, you know, I after uh, the, the Betty Friedan, the, the anniversary of that book, okay, um, and I, I, I you know, I, cont I contributed to like roundtable things talking about the the impact of that book. I thought I wanted to take another look at sexual politics again, and I looked at that book, and I think there's a lot of problems with that book. Okay, there are all kinds of problems because it's uh, uh, to me, it's uh, very odd that Kate Millett, okay, that for the rest of her life. She never wrote a, a, a paragraph that was even remotely like that book. All right. She went out. She she wrote memoirs. She wrote. She wrote all kinds of you know other other things. She became a sculptor. You know, up in uh, up the Hudson or whatever she was doing, uh, and so on. Um, and I, 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 I you know I, I really think that someone needs to dig into the history of, of that book. Okay, because uh, I I hear a voice in that book that is. Not her voice. I hear another. Voice. I think it's a man's voice. Okay, all right, and it's a man. It's one of her professors. It's either a professor that, that she had at Oxford or it's a professor at Columbia. All right, and I and I and, and I think it's. If, if she, I mean, she in, in her, um, you know, in the acknowledgments, she does have a list of names, and there is a there is a you know a mention of a, a couple of male professors and so on. But I think that you know if if this book this book which became so important and Monumental and still remembered as a landmark of, of new feminism and so on. If I, I want it to be admitted, the degree to which a man, okay, used his knowledge, okay, his syntax, okay, right, and contributed to that book. Okay, she did not honestly acknowledge how much. I mean, I don't think it was all all that. Okay, but I, I hear a voice that is distinctly older than our generation because she was like my generation, I think, roughly. Although I think she's a little older than me. But um, uh, but there was a certain sound of uh, that that Columbia professor professors had that, that I began to pick up because I have, I have met and had such great relationships with actually um, graduates of Columbia, the great books program of Columbia. For some reason we're on the same, well, well for some reason, it's obvious, okay? They have read all the great books, right? And they're, therefore their minds are structured, okay? And organized in ways that um, post-structuralism can't even hope to do. All right, but anyway, all right, um, all right, so the, um, then late, later on there was Andrew Dworkin, okay, in the, in the 1980s, she became a leading figure of, of second wave feminism. And then there was the third wave of, in the 1990s that sort of sputtered up and sputtered out. Um, uh, and there was like Naomi Wolf and uh, you know, Susan Faludi, uh, who was, uh, and who Gloria Steinem embraced, okay, in, in a famous Time Magazine cover, you can find it on the web, okay, where they look like um, terrorists or, or, or like you know, underground people clinging to each other in a bare room. People said, well, what kind of vision of feminism is that, these two women? But, but that's where Gloria Steinem gave her you know, imprimatur to Susan Faludi, who you'll notice Susan Faludi's career immediately sank after that. 
<laughs> I mean, she came, she came up, she came uh, with a memoir about, uh, about two years ago about her father and, you know, having, having now turned transgender and wherever he is in Europe. And, um, and, now, and now she's recounting um, the horrors of her childhood. Her, her father, you know, attacking her mother's lover, okay, with a knife all over the house, blood all over the house. I thought, this is her childhood, right? And this, I mean, I want, I want feminists, you know, to come from good families, okay, and solid families. I don't, <laughs> why is every single feminist, you know, like Trace, you know, Gloria Steinem, I mean, she's written a lot about it. Like her, her mother was was mentally disturbed, and, and Gloria Steinem had to had to nurse her. The father abandoned them to a rat-filled apartment, and so on. This is like this is why they're so anti-male. Okay, they they're just anti their fathers. It's not really, this. I, I have been trying to get the anti-male you know, uh, you know, obsession of feminism out of it okay, for decade after decade after decade. And I, I you know I constantly say only weak women cannot admit the strength of men and of the great achievements of men, okay? I, I've learned incredible amount from men, okay, all right? I admire men, okay, all right? I'm, I, I, don't, I don't feel I have to like, you know, say, oh, they're all toxic and they're all, you know, and like always, you know, the little, the little claws out and so on and so forth, all right? And it's, it's gotten really bad. You know, you, you all know how bad it's gotten, okay, where everything about, ma anything masculine is automatically defined, okay, as a social construction, all right? Oh, oh, please, okay, my, my, my father's generation, went to World War II, okay, my, my father was a paratrooper, my, I've got all of my uncles, they were in the Navy, and, you know, in the, in the Army and so on, okay, I saw men, okay, men who could do anything, okay, you know, men, men who could like, take a piece of wood and, and like make, you know, thing like, kind of, like, capable men, you know, men, uh, men who respected women, there was no abuse, okay, that I was ever, uh, not, you know, my whole Italian, uh, American experience upstate New York, never an example of anyone dishonoring a woman or abusing a woman. Okay, these were men, these were incredibly you know talented men uh, who could do uh, anything. Okay, I, I have like nutball. You know, my, my my you know my uncle would make on his off hours. Absolutely work of art. Okay, and so on. You know my grandfather would be making baskets in the, in the backyard. They they worked worked worked. They gave 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 to women and children. Men have been sacrificing for women and children for like millennia. And so instead we have all this like focus on the on the horrors of men. The, the worst men. The brutal men. Okay. Well, every every brutal person should be you know should be jailed. Okay. I mean, obviously. Oh, sorry. Am I going on too long? I think we're actually out of time. Oh. oh.